Okay. So here we are. Let's grab this. There. There we are. So I've got some buckskin here, and I've got someone who wants me to make them a pair of moccasins, tracing of their feet, and cut out a pattern. Um, I think this will be one of the videos I'm doing, uh, making historic clothing. <clears throat> I said I'd do some moccasins, and I said I'd do some leggings. Um, I'm not one much for sewing up shirts. I've done it once, but I'm not keen to do it again, so... Um, that's something I'm comfortable to trade or buy from other people. But moccasins are something that I uh, can do pretty well. So here's a pattern and what it looks like. Um, to create a pattern, let me... There we go. Okay, you can see where I've cut out moccasins from this hide before. There's another pair that got cut out up there. But basically, to create a pattern for moccasins, which you would need to do is, I usually <clears throat> will do it either straight on the leather or do it on a plastic, or I'm sorry, a paper bag or a piece of cardboard or something, um, something that's got a little bit of stiffness to it. But basically all you need to do is take, stick your feet together, right, like this, <clears throat> and Trace around your feet. So just take it. Just take a pencil. Trace the outline of your feet. Sand uh, just straight up. Let's. It's best to let somebody else do it because if you're bending over, it could change the weight distribution on your feet. So just literally sit here um, and let someone trace around your feet. It doesn't take very long. And then step off and add about an inch to the outside of the pattern. So kind of smooth out the line, um, exclude your toes, do not do the gap in the middle of your feet. Um, and from the widest point of your foot on the outside, draw a straight line and just add an inch to the entirety of that pattern and then draw a straight line uh, about an inch behind the heel. And that is the pattern for one foot if you don't add ears into your pattern. Um, and by ears, I mean the, the side flaps. So... What you can see here that I've done is I've taken and I have drawn out the pattern onto the leather and I've started on the process of adding some ears. Um, but I just figured I'd show you um, what the process has been up to this point and then catch you up now. So, <clears throat> drawing out the ears, usually I go about halfway halfway along the, I'll cut them actually straight, so they don't cut straight, so you go across, same deal, cut them out, I'll actually just draw this across, I won't worry about it until we're ready to cut, so there we are, so that's my pattern, I'm going to cut this out now. <clears throat> and you want your leather that you use for moccasins, you don't want, um, what did I say, the commercial hides um, where like it's smooth on one side, like a finished side and a rough side, don't, don't get that. Um, that is completely incorrect for the 18th century. And... They won't feel very good on your feet anyway. So stay away from um, single sided leather. I would stay away from commercial leather in general, but if you really want brain tan, this is a very, very close, oh, very, very close substitute to brain tan, in my opinion. It's very, very nice leather. Um, it's got the right springiness, so you don't want leather that you can stretch and it'll stay there. That's, this leather's got some stretch to it, but it returns back to its original shape. And you can see, more importantly, it is, come on, suede on both sides, and it is super, super soft and fluffy. It's 
almost just like brain tan. If I was to smoke this, if you handed me one of these hides smoked um, and a brain tan hide, I don't know that I'd be able to tell the difference right off the bat. I'd have to take a closer look and you could tell, like you could definitely tell that it's not brain tan, but it would take you a minute. <clears throat> and so when you're just wearing it on your feet, um, for moccasins, uh, it's not going to be that big a deal. So I'm going to cut out this pattern and I am going to use it as a guide to make the other one. same. These scissors aren't great. I don't know where my dead scissors go. I always buy my scissors and kitchen knives and that kind of stuff. pinks and flowers and stuff. Not only that's what I like, but I mean, hey. Um, but it keeps people from stealing it. <laughs> this is always a plus. Yeah, these scissors are junk. But it's not really going to matter. Sold moccasins anywhere from fifty to uh, two hundred fifty dollars, depending on how fancy they are. If you want quill work, um, all that kind of stuff. So these ones are pretty simple. You can just get the bucks. They're just going to be one solid piece of leather sewn up and ready to wear. <clears throat> sure beats the hell out of those uh, really dumb looking Minnetonka type moccasins. I'm not even going to call them moccasins. They're just weird looking shoes. No offense if you have any, but it's more Minnetonka's fault than it is yours. Moccasin is an Algonquin word. The first use of it in European European lexicon comes from the Pamunkey on the Virginia coast. John Smith is asking what things are. Same way that possum, raccoon, um, persimmon, uh, pecan simon, or pecan. Sorry if you say a pecan, but it's wrong. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's an Algonquin based word. Here's a pattern. <clears throat> Ta-da! Look at that. So this ear on this side, I will certainly trim out some more. Um, this actually, no, this would fit me. Well, would it? Yeah. What the hell? It would. Um, so yeah. So that is what one pattern looks like. So. This leather is stretchy enough that it would certainly stretch to fit almost anything. I've got some big clog hoppers, uh, size 13s. This guy is nine and a half, uh, but you can't really make moccasins based on your shoe size. You have to have the foot there or tracing of the foot and, and some other measurements and stuff um, because they are very individual. They're three dimensional, right? Tracings are two dimensional. Your feet are not. So it's important to make sure that you have the depth and the circumference of the ankle and the arch of your foot. All of that is important in making moccasins that fit right and are comfortable. Otherwise, you're just going to have, you might as well just, you might as well just go buy some Minnetonkas. I mean, if that's what you're, what you're going with.
Exact science making moccasins is <clears throat> an art like anything else, I guess. It's more utilitarian art, which I think is the best for me. I needed utilitarian art. Now another thing too is the direction that you lay out the moccasins. You'll notice that these were both laid out in the same direction. They were both pointed the same way as were the ones before them. Um, and the reason for that is it's important to make sure that your moccasins are laying with the grain of the hive so that you take into account which direction that the leather naturally wants to stretch. So the leather naturally wants to stretch more sideways than it does lengthwise tan hides, um, you get a lot of that length stretch in there on a set. Um, and when you make moccasins, <clears throat> you, you certainly do not want your moccasins to stretch lengthwise because you'll, you'll have floppy feet, you'll have clown shoes on. If they stretch widthwise, you can change that. You can take some, you can literally unsew the moccasin shrink it back up, you know, like unsew the moccasin, take some material off, and then sew it back up, um, and it'll be fine. Or um, you make them super tight and let them stretch in, which is the ideal. So you make them super tight, let them stretch in, let them get some use on them, um, and then after that, Some people add soles to their moccasins. Um, that's it's a, a six of one half dozen of the other. Um, I do occasionally, especially if it's requested. So if someone says, "Hey, please make me a pair of moccasins. I would like an added sole," then yeah, that's fine. I can certainly do that. Um, but historically, most moccasins do not have an added sole in the Eastern Woodlands. Um, and I would prefer them without a sole. Um, my work moccasins currently, I love that I can say that. My work moccasins uh, <laughs> do not have a sole on them currently. Um, my dress moccasins do. So they're quilled and walnut dyed and got deer tail cones on them. They're nice looking. So I want to make sure that they last a little bit longer. That's the great thing too about like our dress moccasins. The quill work is like kind of um, modular. So the ears, flaps on those are generally sewn on separately rather than these, which are gonna be like more utilitarian, more everyday kind of moccasins. The ears are just on there. They're just a single solid piece of leather. They're made very quickly. So it does not take long to make these moccasins at all. And sometimes it doesn't take long to wear them out. So you don't want to spend a whole lot of time on something that's not going to last you more than maybe four, three, four weeks. So, but by that time, it's time to go hunting again. So what care are you, right? It gives you something to do. Of course, men traditionally... Um, don't have any internal responsibilities, so we don't have any say within the house um, or the property, that kind of stuff. So our responsibilities are mainly external. Go hunt, go fight, go fish, go play stickball, um, be external delegates. So when our community votes and makes decisions, our elected representatives uh, will go and deliver that information. But <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, we don't really have much to do. So hunting and um, doing all this kind of stuff is like our sole responsibility, providing for family, defending our family. Um, that's really it. But we're not going to have a whole lot in the way of power within that community. So you have time to make moccasins. You have time to go find them and do the things that you want to do. 
Some men choose to stay home and work out in the field. Some men choose to be warriors. Some men want to do nothing but play stickball. Some men want to be politicians. You name it. There's all kinds of people. Here we are to box some hats, right? So I love the way this letter feels. You can just see how stretchy and soft it is. It's just like pillowy. <laughs> right. So. Yeah. <coughs> So the next thing to do is to um, get an awl, um, cut out some leather strips, or you can sew it up with artificial sinew or real sinew. Um, you could sew it up with hemp cord, whatever you want to sew it up with. I'm going to sew mine up with um, uh, leather, uh, leather strip. So I need to go cut a strip, um, uh, two long strips will do. Um, it'll be two seams on each moccasin the toe and to the back and then after that's done then the moccasin is done so I'm gonna go grab that I'll be right back